Okay, so Stonehenge, the, the two of the station stones point directly to the Great Pyramid. Uh, there's a lot of connections between Stonehenge and the Great Pyramid. So to look at the top view, I took a, just took Google, this is a Google Earth picture, but to put it in a diagram here. So if you go from Station Stone 93 through 91, it points directly to the Great Pyramid, okay? So there's a line I drew in Google Earth from, you know, Stonehenge to the Great Pyramid. Okay, right there. So, um, so let's do that. Let's fly from Stonehenge. The Google Earth lets you do this. And so we're going to go over to, you know, near where we are now, okay? All right, so if you take the measurements of that diagonal, uh, the width and the length, that happens to equal 7,920 inches. Okay, so the Great Pyramid, one side of the Great Pyramid happens to equal 7,920 Egyptian inches. Okay, all, all four sides measure that. Okay. This is one of the ways ancient metrology indicates connectivity. The Stonehenge measure is in English inches. The, Eng the Egyptian measure is in Egyptian inches. The relationship's not in the measures, but in the connection of the numbers. So again, I, and that's one of the things that ties all these megalithic sites together. As some of you might know, most of the major megalithic sites are in a single great circle around the Earth. They're not scattered all over the planet. They're in a single great circle around the Earth. Okay, another, this is a top view now. So you're looking at top of Stonehenge. Now, you know a lot of people gather. It's a famous, you know, pagan thing or whatever. They, they come in the midsummer solstice and they all stare there. And so they're standing here in the Sarsen Center and they're looking through the heel stone to watch the, the summer sunrise, okay? Well, if you take north from there, just like somebody asked me what direction, uh, Junior asked me what direction the coffin was pointing uh, today and it was 23 degrees. Well, this just happens to be pointing at the exact slope angle of the Great Pyramid. Okay, so the Great Pyramid would go right there. Another way in which ancient metrology indicates connectivity, the Stonehenge angle is the same as the slope angle of the Great Pyramid. One is an angle on the ground, the other is an angle upward on, on the face of the Great Pyramid. Okay, here's one of my discoveries. So when we go to the Giza Plateau, you'll see this, what I have called the Holy Shaft. So it's just this nondescript shaft that's near the Khafre Causeway, okay? And so uh, I get a, get a couple of YouTube videos about it with my friend Will Wire, a great graphics artist. We took some measurements of it, and, uh, and I found this circle. So the, right here is where that holy shaft is. So if you take this circle around it, it's exactly 888 feet. I was shocked when I found this. It's actually it's 888 feet to Khufu, it's 888 feet to the Sphinx, exactly 888 feet to Kenkawes, the first female ruler in the history of the world, and exactly 888 feet to the east side of the Khafre Pyramid. 888, as some of you might know, is the numerical value of Huesus, Jesus in Greek. And uh, there's a, brother, a bunch of other uh, 888s. So um, it's 888 to the Sphinx, 888 to Kenkawes. So this couldn't be by chance. So I count this a discovery because it's plain to me that the designers of, of Giza, where there's such a unitary build as I talked about before, you know, that wouldn't be by chance. So there's the holy shaft right there. This is a satellite image. So, you know, to the southeast or now, that 888 feet in ancient cubits, and that's Noachian cubits. That's the cubit of Noah, but I call it an ancient cubit. There, there it is. And so uh, the circumference of that circle that touches the four major monuments. And this holy shaft, those are the four closest monuments to it. There's not any others. 3168, okay, let's take Stonehenge. Okay, so if you take the Sarsen circle in Stonehenge, it's 316.8 feet. All right, and if you go through, and so there's obviously a connection in numbers there. You go through the blue stone circle and it's 50.4 feet. So there's an obvious connection of numbers there. Okay, and uh, if, if you take the square that would have the same, uh, you know, uh, perimeter as that circle has a circumference, and then you could do the same thing over here. Well, if we do that to the Great Pyramid, right there, it's 31,680 inches. So you notice the connection in numbers, okay? 3168, 3168. Okay, let's put the Earth on there. We put the Great Pyramid, we put the circle that I discovered, we put Stonehenge, let's put the earth there, okay? Make a square around the earth. It's 3,168 miles. All right, so there's the connection in numbers again. Uh, so that, that square right there, 7,920 cubits of Noah, that square, 79.20 feet. 
the Great Pyramid, uh, 7,920 inches, okay? Um, okay, through the center of the Earth, 7,920 miles. The Great Pyramid, Stonehenge, and the Holy Circle, which I discovered, all indicate the ancients knew the dimensions of planet Earth. Why? I, I, I'm following a group of metrologists now who are world class, write the books. Uh, there is no mainstream. They're not, the metrologists are not part of mainstream science. They're a group of people that study these measures. It was a great discovery to them that all the systems of measures are connected. The Sumerian, the Indian, uh, the Babylonian, the Chinese, all are connected to the English foot, and the English foot goes way back before England, the, the imperial foot. If you take the radius, a furlong, another ancient unit of measure still used today, 31,680 furlongs from the, from the center of the earth, the, the radius of the earth, basically. Take the moon. God created the sun and the moon, it says in the first chapter of the Bible. All right. Go around that. The megalithic mile is a unit of measure that Alexander Tom discovered. He was a professor at Oxford. He studied the ancient monuments to try and figure out what the unit was. He found it, wrote books about it. He's controversial because mainstream doesn't like to accept, you know, things from the outside, but it's, it's a totally accepted measure by metrologists, though. Uh, and he, again, he derived it by studying monuments. He didn't invent it. He measured a bunch of things, found out what unit they used. Just like I could probably figure out, you know, if I studied a, a, a barn you built before you put sides on it, I could probably figure out if you measured in inches. You probably do. Your tape measures probably in inches. But the point is you can go to a building after it was built and figure out what the unit they used was. Okay. And let's take the sun. God created the sun and the moon. 31,600,800 megalithic miles. Again, it's not some made up unit. It's a unit that was derived from ancient measures, going back, I think, to Enoch. So pretty amazing to me. Let's take the New Jerusalem. The dimensions are given plainly in the book of Revelation. Perimeter, 31,000, 31,680,000. Bingo. Let's look at Ezekiel's temple, millennial temple. Dimensions are given in the Bible, 31,680. So um, I just think that's amazing. So the great, there's a lot of amazing things about the Great Pyramid. Um, when we go in publicly, you know, uh, the, nobody goes in the original entrance. It's blocked by the Egyptian government. Al Mamun, Caliph Al Mamun in the ninth century, blasted his way in straight through here, and it's pretty wide so you don't have to crawl. The original entrance is like this, so Alma Moon blasted. So we, all public people now come into the Great Pyramid, come in, uh, right, actually it comes in right, right here. What am I doing? It's below the original entrance. You come straight in there, and then, I just did a video, this, this is one of my discoveries. I'm not gonna take time to talk about this, but this is amazing to me. It's the Great Pyramid, phi and pi, the, probably the two most basic constants, you know, uh, pi, is an eternal number, it goes on forever. And uh, phi is beauty, and the Great Pyramid follows both of these proportions. This was my discovery, it's, it's too long to talk about it here. Just a, just a quick couple amazing things. Here's Menkara, the third pyramid. And so from the, nor the southwest corner to the southwest corner, it's exactly 1,000 phi. And if you take the other corner, the southeast to the southeast, it's 1,000 times the root of pi. So you have phi and pi built in, so again, this some great designer had to put this plateau together. This is not by chance. Phi is the Greek constant that's used in beauty. Pi, to me, symbolizes eternity. The Great Pyramid is in proportion and harmony with the Earth and the Moon. If you superimpose the, the uh, dimensions of the Great Pyramid over the equator so that the base of the Great Pyramid is at the equator and let it go up, it would go to exactly where the center of the Moon is. Okay, so you put the Great Pyramid there and uh, so in a sense, the Great Pyramid is connected to the Earth and the Moon. Okay, squaring the circle. Now, anciently, there were five problems in mathematics that were unsolvable. One was the doubling of the cube. What's the formula? If you have a cube that's these dimensions, what's the formula to know what a cube double that volume would be? Well, there is no formula. That's one of the impossible. It's one of the five impossible. And squaring the circle is another one of the impossible problems of math. If I give you the dimensions of a, a square, so let's say six inches by six inches, okay, what size radius circle has the same circumference as that? Well, there is no formula. It doesn't exist except the Great Pyramid. 
solves the conundrum. So if you take the Great Pyramid, so what I did in drawing that square, I just took the base here and moved it over here. So that's the base of the Great Pyramid, okay? That's a square, all right? So if you take the height of the Great Pyramid and use that height to be a radius of a circle, okay? That, sol that, that solves the conundrum, the unsolvable conundrum. How do you square the circle? Um, because the circumference of the circle equals the perimeter of the square. One of the unsolvable problems of math. And anciently, the square symbolized Earth, the circle symbolized heaven. So again, to me, this is a metaphor that the Great Pyramid is revealing how to connect with God. It's the great, you know, it, it is a grievous task, it says in uh, Ecclesiastes. It's a grievous task which God has given the sons of men to do, to figure out what the meaning of life is. Um, so Egyptologists think that Egyptians built the Great Pyramid and the alternatives don't, okay? I've kind of got fingers in both groups. And uh, so, for instance, 2014, I'm between the paws of the Sphinx, where you pay the big money, Andrew, to go there with Zahi. I, between 2015, I, went, I, I did the next year tour with him because he added to the tour the tombs of the builders. So there's an archaeological evidence. He found the tombs of the builders of the pyramid. He asked me to sit at his right hand at a banquet at the Mina House. And uh, he wrote a note to me, Larry, let the pyramids guide you. This is Dr. Mark Lehner, who spent 40 years studying on the Giza Plateau, probably the single greatest forensic scientist, archeologist, Egyptologist. Uh, I happened to run into him in October with a tour group I had. So I said, Mark, can I get a picture with you? I've been to his house before. He said, uh, it's good to see you again, Larry. And uh, so I'm honoring him here for his lifelong work of excavating and surveying at Giza in Egypt. I told Dr. Lehner several times, I'm constantly defending his work against the claims of the alternatives. And uh, so in, in front of my uh, tour group, I honored Mark by saying some things about him and all the work he's done in Egypt there.